Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, it looks a little different. I have moved house. It was very quick. My landlord told me I needed to move and then it's been really hard to find a place where I live. Um, we did try it at the back end of last year. So we found this place and we moved really quick. Um, and so now I'm here and I hope there's not a bit of an echo because this is a much bigger room and it's a little bit, I've always had an issue with it being dark in my videos, but it's even a little bit darker now because the paint job in here is darker, but I'm going to keep playing around with the setup. If you have any comments, let me know down below. I also added this shelf. It's a shelf, but I'm, I just put it on top of my vanity. I refuse to buy more specific makeup storage. I'm really trying to keep a consolidated consolidated collection, but it was really annoying me not having access to my skincare. So skincare is now in there and it's reachable. So we love that. Also say hi to my pimples today. I call them the moving pimples. This was removalist number one and this was removalist number two. They stressed me out. Let's get into the video. Say gasha. Anyway. Today we're going to do updated favorites because, again, if someone can please let me know, I want to know what people are reaching for all the time. And nobody does actual favorites anymore. They do monthly favorites. And I'm like, okay, that was your favorite for the month. Cool. But what is your favorite? So I have my updated favorites in front of me. How this is going to go, also I'll have the original video linked if you haven't seen it. How this is going to go is I'm only going to update so we'll go through the list and i will mention what's changed but i'm not going to go through every product again so let's start with primer i had the napoleon purtis autopilot primer listed which i 100 percent completely still stand by but i'm going to add the auric glow lust into that category because that is what i use this for I love this product. It's so dewy. It's so luminous. It's just delicious. I also find my skin really likes this. It's got a few skincare properties in it. Um, Jen Love actually broke down the skincare ingredients in here because Samantha Ravendahl didn't in either of her videos. Um, so my skin seems to respond really well and I think it's just nice to have an option for a glowy primer. And that's what I use this for. I don't use this for a cheek highlight, cream highlight once my makeup's done. I do need to give that a try, but that just isn't my preference with makeup. So not sure how that will go. So I'm going to throw that in the primer category. And I typically wear this on more natural days. You can definitely wear it on a full beat day, especially if you're drier skin type than me. But for me, if I'm going full beat, I'll probably lean toward the autopilot. And if I'm going more natural, glowy, girl, glam, then I would do the Auric. Next, I'm actually going to talk about the Hollywood Flawless Filter. And I cannot stress this enough. These two products are completely different for me. So I have the Hollywood Flawless Filter in the shade 4. And I have the Auric in Selenite. So this is more my skin shade. So it acts more like a primer. It doesn't offer me any coverage or really the coverage and the dewiness is a bit different. Whereas the Hollywood Flawless Filter is glowier. It's still dewy, but not as dewy as the Auric, but it offers me a lot, lot, lot more coverage. So I actually tend to wear this by itself and I actually find this product is too heavy for underneath makeup for myself personally. I have big pores, combination skin, and doing this and a foundation is just way too much. I also have early signs of aging, so it's just way too much. However, on its own, stunning, love it, live it, breathe it. And I, the shade four is probably a solid shade to two shades too dark for me, but because it's not a full coverage, you don't have to be a true match and it actually gives me that really healthy glow. So I'm gonna throw that in here and I'm probably gonna call it a skin tint. So that's what I'm gonna throw in for a skin tint. I also need to throw in my Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturizer. So I noticed when I was making this, when I did my favorites last time, I didn't include my natural girl makeup so much because I'm sure I had that routine at the time, but I definitely wasn't opting for it as much. 
Aside from the breakout I've had today, my skin has cleared up a lot, so I'm able to lean towards that natural girl glam a little bit more. Also, it's a little bit more the trend, so I do find myself leaning toward it more often. I still love a full glam, but I do do a mix, especially if I'm just like jumping out for breakfast with Jake or whatever, but I'm really not the type of person to go very many places without any makeup on. So I love that routine and I do want to do a video on it because it's so quick and easy and I love it. But the Laura Mercier is the skin tint that I go for every day. Um, I wear this to work. I put my Auric down first and then this. I choose Auric on the everyday basis because of the skincare ingredients. So I put that down and this over the top to kick up the coverage. Do I need to do both steps? Probably not. I think I do both steps because I enjoy to and I really love to look super, super dewy. So you have to like being dewy to do both at the same time. But for years I wore this by itself and it's absolutely stunning. I'm so excited they came out with a like an even glowier version, which I would be so keen to try. But this just has a very nice amount of coverage um, enough to make me feel confident. It makes me feel very youthful. I just love it. My skin seems to respond to it very well and it has SPF. So if you buy it in Australia, it actually won't show the SPF rating on it because we have very high SPF standards legally in Australia, but this is great. Okay, so I also realized, which is wild, that in that list I did not include my Becca under eye corrector. So I went on an under eye corrector journey this year and it was a complete waste of money because I've had this one for, this is one of the oldest things in my collection. <laughs> and I've come back to it hard and it is so perfect to the point where I get, no matter what routine I'm doing, glam, full coverage, whatever, I have to wear this. This is every day, every night. This is on my face and if I don't wear it, I feel like there are times where I'm rushing and I forget it and I'm like, no, because my under eyes are my most problematic area. So this just really helps and I find concealer just lays over the top of it so beautifully. So I'm going to keep that in there. So now I can jump back into my list. For foundations, I put NARS Sheer Glow, NARS Natural Radiant, and Hourglass Sticks. So I'm going to cross out the Hourglass Sticks all together. They're just probably too heavy for what I opt for these days. Again, I lean toward those when I'm having very problematic skin. So I don't lean for the Hourglass Sticks. I haven't very much in the last year at all. However, I'm going to take them out because I'm not using them so regularly. The NARS Natural Radiant Longwear, I still love that foundation. However, I mostly lean for my sheer glow. Like I said, the trend now is a little bit less coverage and my skin is a little bit better. So I have found sheer glow being the number one foundation that I lean towards. I did just order the new NARS foundation because NARS foundations are so good. Oh my God, I'm excited. But I'm so curious because the reviews have been like, I love it, but I want to know if something's like ride or die. Oh my God, obsessed with that. I haven't heard anyone say that. And usually I won't buy a product unless I hear someone say that. I want to hear that it's the best thing since sliced bread. So skipping ahead to concealer, I only put one concealer down last year. Who am I? I put the Hourglass Vanish Airbrush, which I stand by 100%. That is the best concealer because I look like I've been run over a, by a bus most mornings. Like I don't know what happened in my sleep. My under eyes are just hectic. So I definitely still lean for that concealer all the time. However, I'm going to add two to the category. Again, I'm going to add to my natural girl makeup and it is the Josie Moran Vibrancy Concealer. I know this is such an old product, but I went through this phase last year where I rewatched all of Samantha Ravenel's old videos and she mentioned this a lot. So I picked it up and I fell in love with it. It is a beautiful amount of coverage, a beautiful finish. It's extremely hydrating. Again, I think it's got some great skincare benefits. This is what I wear every day to work, unless I'm dealing with something 
really bad and then I'll hop in to the next product I'm going to talk about. In this circumstance, I'm not going to work, but I'm probably going somewhere where I don't want it to look like I'm wearing a lot of makeup still. I don't want to apply any powder still. Let it be known I do not set this with a powder. I don't wear any powders on a daily basis because that has been one of the things that's helped me clear my skin up. I don't want to set, but I still want a nice amount of coverage. And I cannot believe I'm going to say this, the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I was about to do a video based on overhyped products because there are many in the beauty community that have spoken about that I personally think are overhyped. This was one of them. This shade Chantilly and Cafe Con Leche as well. Um, they are, they've been in my collection so long without me using them that they could borderline be expired, but they're not because they are beautiful. Why haven't I been using this the whole time? This is full coverage that is not cakey. I cannot believe that I, I just thought they were so dry. I don't know why I thought it was so dry. I don't know if I've started to look after my skin so much more in the last couple years that this now works for me. If anyone can please let me know if they've tried this and they thought it was dry, please let me know because these are no longer dry for me. I'm actually obsessed with them because they give me a nice amount of coverage. I don't need to set them. They look filtered. Oh, I just, I actually just ordered another shade because this shade um, 2.5 is way too dark, but it's a great spot conceal shade. Chantilly, I love for highlighting. Holy crap, that looks so good. But I just ordered shade one, I think it was, but I'll do a video on all my purchases. Like I said, I'm gonna continue to do my purchase videos. So that will be coming up at some point. So that is it for concealer changes. Cream, bronze, and contour. I've put my RCMA Custom Australian palette. I need to edit that because I only use a couple shades from that palette to bronze with. So you could 100% just buy those single shades. Definitely do not buy that whole palette just to use the creams as cream bronzer contours. Let it be known that I bronzer. I don't contour. I cream bronze where you would contour. I like a very, very warm coloring on my face so that is why however I do have another one that I want to add <laughs> mm. this well add slash you uh, my recommendation would to only be for one or the other the RCMA or this one the Anastasia Beverly Hills ABH cream bronzer in the shade amber they both essentially do the same thing. They're both bronzer. They're both extremely warm. Um, I'd compare them to MAC Give Me Sun. That was the vibe I was trying to get. MAC Give Me Sun is my favorite bronzer shade. It's not my favorite formula, but it's my favorite shade. Still a great formula, but this one is a bit different to the RCMA in it has a matte finish. But it really depends on everything you've done before that. I put down so many glowy bases like sheer glow or auric or um my hollywood flawless filter that this doesn't really look that matte on my skin but i still really love the shade and that was overall what i'm looking for when i'm purchasing a cream bronzer so i love the shade and the formula is great is it really that matte no so if you were looking for something really really matte you would have to use mattifying products before using this to get the matte effect and then next i'm adding something another item into this category i should almost change this to be like three of my favorite in every category because i seem to have three favorites of every most things because they serve different purposes full glam i want to i want to look pretty flawless but i'm trying to fake it that i'm not wearing that much makeup and then my go to work i just want to make myself not look like i've been run over by a truck so I'm going to throw in the Charlotte Tilbury um, Contour Wand. This is magic. I, I said it in a video last, my last video, so I probably won't harp on this too much. I just want to discuss where it fits in my regimen. This is the middle category where it's like, I want people to think that I just look like this. Although it's not as warm as I would love it to be, and I'd love to see her come out with a really warm color, this color I still love, which is so surprising because typically if it's not warm, I'm like, mm, not for me. 
but the formula is just so magnificent. It's so dewy without being oily. It's glowy. It's youthful. Oh, it blends so, so well. Um, you do have to, I saw someone on TikTok this week where hers was like all coming out. There is a twist. You must lock it after every time you use it. Oh, what a waste. I just, I don't like it when people don't treat their makeup very good. And I was like to her, she was like, I don't like this product. Look at what it did. I was like, well, you didn't close it, you know? So I'm going to jump in and I had put no cream bronzers in last year, which I find so interesting because the cream blush trend just blew up. And this just goes to show that I didn't list any last year and I've got two that I want to throw into the category this year. Um, I just did a video on these. These are the NARS liquid blushes. Love these, live for these. These fall into the full glam category if I'm going out and I need my makeup to stay and I want my blush to stay because that is the thing that always leaves my skin first. I am going to put these on. I will outline the two sh oh. I'm going to pick one shade that I think is my absolute ride or die, and that's Dolce Vita. I like shades that make me look sunburnt, and Dolce Vita is it. So that's the one I'm going to pick to recommend to you. And then my second liquid blush is going to be the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand. So again, this fits in that middle category. I'm trying to trick people into thinking that I look nice. <laughs> So this is Pinkgasm, it's viral for a reason. All the same claims as the contour wand where it's glowy, luminous, dewy, delicious. And it's just a beautiful color. And it also has like a highlighting effect on the skin, which just looks so nice. So highly, highly recommend this and it's definitely a favorite. So let's talk about some setting powders. I had put the Hourglass Veil Translucent, which is 100% still one of my favorites, especially for that middle category, natural glam. I would like to set down a little bit because perhaps I need to get some longer wear out of my makeup. So yeah, I still love and use the Hourglass Veil Translucent, Translucent Setting Powder. The next one I had put a pressed option, which is the Charlotte, Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless finish in the pressed, which I still 100% stand by as well. Again, if you're wanting to like really get maximum coverage, that's what I would lean towards. I have decided to also throw in the loose ones, these. Um, I actually only use the shade two. I really regret buying the shade one. I don't know why I just held them both up. So let's just hold up number two, Ash. I love this because it makes my pores look really small. So I tend to lean for this when I'm filming or like I said before, really, really glam night, but I'm actually not requiring that extra coverage from the pressed version. I just wanna set my face, reduce the size of my pores and get that really airbrushed look. So that's where that one comes in. I know I'm like, th there's a lot from every category now, but I just need to be honest in what I reach for all the time. So I am gonna throw that one in. And then second, this one is actually for under eyes. So this is the Beauty Bakery Flower Powder. By all means, you can use this for your face and I actually need to experiment around using it on my face more, but I tend to go for this under my eyes. It is the finest powder I've ever used and it just makes your under eyes look the best that I've seen my under eyes look. I do still like the KVD palette, shade and light palette that I've listed here, but I do notice that that does crease. Everything creases on me because I think I just genuinely have a lot of under eye creases. But this powder, I believe, looks better than the KVD. And I actually have been known to put the KVD over the top to brighten. However, this provides a lot of brightening. I have the shade Oat. And this is very, very brightening. And I love that about that. So... I borderline this knocks out my KVD, but I do still reach for my KVD shade and light palette. I 100% still reach for my MAC um, Sculpt and Shape Contour palette because again, that's different. I reach for that when my under eyes are really dull. For whatever reason, something's happened with the makeup or I'm really extra tired that day or 
for some reason, maybe I use too dark a shade of something and you really need to brighten, wake in the under eyes, that's when I reach for my MAC palette. Um, it's a little bit luminous too, so if you're looking dry or dull, it really brightens that up. So I definitely still reach for my MAC palette. Let's jump into bronzers. Bronzers haven't changed. The Hourglass Ambient Lighting Bronzer is still my favorite. The Jaclyn Cosmetics Bronze and Blush Duos in Golden Goddess and Warm Flush is still my favorite. So let's move into blushes. I put Hourglass Ambient Blush in Mood Exposure, but it's actually changed. So the Hourglass Blush Formula is my favorite blush formula along with the Jaclyn Cosmetics Blush Formula. I do really enjoy baked formulas all together. You'll notice that in the bronzers I like as well. So I actually picked up a mini because I was, I'm not normally a pink blush person, but the last six months has completely changed. I love pink blushes, so this is the Hourglass Blush in Luminous Flush. Oh my god, this is just so gorgeous. It is so bright and pretty, and the formula is just obviously the same as what I've said. Like, oh, oh this makes me feel giddy, this blush. And I wish everything was available in minis, because when was the last time you truly panned a blush? Honestly, even I wear this so much and it doesn't even look like I've used it. This is phenomenal, so I'm going to let that take over mood exposure. I obviously still love mood exposure, but this is the one that I reach for the most now. The lights haven't changed, so my favorite is my favorite is the Jaclyn Cosmetics Mood Light in Carrots and then any number of her. They're called the Accent Lights. Any number of them. Iced is really popular. My favorite is Sparks and Mesmerized. So yeah, the Accent Light formula is still my favorite as far as highlights go. Mascara, still Hourglass Unlocked. Lipstick, still MAC Honey Love. And Lip Liner, still Sweet Tea and Love Bite by Morphe. False Lashes, still Manicare Megan's. But I'm also going to throw in the Ardell Clusters. So these are just the trios. I don't know if you can see them. I'll try to get a close up there, but basically they're three individuals clumped together. I actually tend to go for the short ones. The long and the medium are really long. So I actually go for the short. The short is not that short at all. So I'm going to throw those in. And then, so I'm gonna throw in my MAC Pro Longwear Fluid Line as well, because I cannot do an a makeup look without this so I put this to darken my lash line I tend to go for browns over blacks because my overall coloring is like fairly light and I find black too too heavy on my coloring so this is an amazing formula it stays on my lash line all day long I've had this for over a year now and it has not dried out one tiny little bit which is so impressive it's so workable it's so beautiful, it doesn't let me down. I just love it. So that is definitely a staple. So that is my updated favorites. Please let me know what your favorites are if you have any of these and they are your favorites as well. Have a great week, weekend, wherever you are and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.